Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Lostecki. I'm Jeff Jackson. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, Archbishop. Good morning, Jeff. Good to see you. It is a a time when we are called to, and it kind of might sound strange since we're just coming out of Lent and all of a sudden we're experiencing resurrection, but understanding the the divine mercy of God, God's love um, challenges us and conquers um, us to overcome any obstacles, that we can come to, um, uh, to God with anything. Um, and it really challenges uh, the, the individual to seek out reconciliation um, um, and to, to, to throw themselves upon the love of God, who is always um, uh, very generous. Storytelling is a big part of what we want to talk about with our guests this morning. Uh, we're joined by Michael Joles. He's co-producer, along with Bobby Watson, of a film called Cathedral of the North Shore. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here. So what is Cathedral of the North Shore about? Um, Cathedral of the North Shore is a documentary um, that centers around uh, St. Joseph's Parish, which is in Wilmette, Illinois. And the subject of the documentary is a priest uh, by the name of Father William Netstrader, who was from Germany and was sent there back in uh, 1877. I'm sorry, my mistake, 1872, um, with a, when, to this parish that was the most... Uh, undesirable parish in the Archdiocese of Chicago. It was the only parish in between the city of Chicago and the Wisconsin border. Um, It was completely rural. No one wanted to go there. So the uh, bishop at the time uh, told this young priest from Germany, because it was a German-based parish, and said, if you go there and in two years, and please somehow, some way, get it to some degree of stability, I'll give you a parish in the city, which is what was very desirable by priests during that time. He went out there and over the course of actually 50 years remaining there as pastor, uh, really set the groundwork for the area that um, what became in the village of Wilmette and even uh, surrounding areas at the time and uh, influenced other parishes because it was the first. And so our documentary uh, really centered around that figure of Father William Netstrader, who over the course of time, he passed away in 1922. Um, I'm sorry, he passed away. He resigned as pastor in 1922, died in 1924, um, has actually not been able to receive the recognition um, that most people would at that time. So our documentary got a chance to really explore something that uh, people have forgotten about. He was a very fierce man. He came out to found the parish on a horse. I'm not exaggerating when I say that that was wild territory. To send a priest out to found a parish in what was considered to be Indian territory was really a hardship. This would be unheard of today that a Catholic priest would be would even serve on the public school board. But he was the head of the public school board. Archbishop, lots of parishes have interesting histories and stories. They do. They do. Many here in our archdiocese. Right. Around the world. What's unique about this story from your perspective? Well, from my perspective, I spent 19 years as a uh, <laughs> there as a um, uh, as what they refer to as supply priest. We would refer to as a supply priest um, uh, um, here in Milwaukee, meaning I, uh, my assignment was the major seminary at Mundelein. But you have one particular parish that you're um, connected with. And um, uh, early on, that parish became St. Joseph's in Wilmette. Um, I ended up um, uh, being invited there by uh, the then pastor, um, Father Don Cusack. Uh, the pastor emeritus was uh, uh, Monsignor Charles Meter, uh, who both of, of whom worked uh, and uh, spent time as uh, teachers at the minor seminary. I uh, was the dean of, of, uh, of, uh, of students. Um, in the minor, minor seminary at Quigley North, and had a personal relationship, good uh, friendship with uh, Father Don Cusack, knew uh, Monsignor Meter, and when I was sent away to Rome for studies, I was invited to uh, to come to St. Joe's, and then 19 years later, I left, you know, uh, officially when I, I took over the past. So for 19 years, uh, part of my, my history was tied to St. Joe's and, and Wilmette, which is a, a, a beautiful parish. I know... You know, we were, we were starting to talk about this rural area type of thing. But for those who don't know, um, you know, the Wilmette, Winnetka uh, area, it, 
It is a very, extremely, very affluent area um, uh, of uh, of Chicago. So when we're talking about this period in the history, uh, we're we're talking about it being kind of rural farmland. You know, uh, we're talking about it being um, uh, an area that's not desirable because it's away from where the action is happening in the, the basically the the central city. But but certainly as as the uh, metropolis has grown. It now in, it encompasses, um, you know, um, the, the the beauty now of Wilmette and, and Winnetka into that whole Chicagoland area. Bobby, how did this film come about? What was the inspiration for this? Well, the inspiration with the film, uh, Mike and I have made films in the past. And, and when we took on this project, uh, what was really important was uh, obviously he had the better knowledge of inside the parish. And when we start, we just basically, we started talking about this, you know, Father Netstrader. And what was so interesting was the more and more we went into the story, the more interesting facts that showed up. For example, um, in Chicago, the old Chicago-Milwaukee line, the railroad tracks that run, uh, because of this parish, there's there was a train station put in Wilmette. And you think, oh, that, you know, you don't realize how, how huge that, uh, that the church played a part in just the federal government allowing a stop to be there. You know, they're like, who are all these people going out into the middle of the forest? Uh, and so more and more as we got into it, we realized that uh, th- this story was very special and it needed to be told. And and why we put it on film was we went to the, uh, the historical uh, society in Wilmette and they had very little to no information which, as filmmakers, kind of, you know, and as journalists, we're like, hey, wait a minute, They're, we're not seeing the whole story here. So what started as what was going to be a five-minute film turned into a, a humongous documentary. And how did it play out? How did it happen, Michael? What What did you do first, and 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 where are you now? Um, what did you do first? Well, we again, it started with they wanted a series of videos and to endorse, you know, kind of sell the parish. And I'm looking at it, going like. You know, that's that's one way to do it. That's very good. But your history, you're 165 years old. Use what you have to uh, um, sell yourself, basically. Um, so when you start delving into the history, that's where we really started finding the story. And it all, you know, it's that old, you know, between for 165 years, you have a lot of stories. But really those um, about 75 years because the beforehand and the afterhand that's where the like okay this is it right here this is this you can hang a story off of this you can make a movie and engage your audiences with this right here so we started getting into it um and again like uh bobby said uh, lack of information uh there were a few times where it was um, what about a picture of this we, we don't have that you know because you only have the amount of information that you know you only have a limited amount of pictures you can't go back and reshoot something sure. from 80 years ago. And so then we got continued getting into it. And really you start discovering the stories of these farmers, you get little bits, bits and pieces. And, and we started thinking to ourselves like, you know, wouldn't it be a cool idea, which is always when someone says that, so wouldn't it be a cool idea if we did a reenactment of the actual German settlers and two months later on a phone call, Hey Mike, let's, act, let's do it. Okay. You know, all right, fine. So we, um, the film opens up the first five minutes is all in German with subtitles and it's these farmers settling the area it's done um, very much like a Terrence Malick film, like Thin Red Line or Tree of Life, where it's it's very evocative, it's very elusive, and you just sort of, it lets the audience kind of dabble in what was going on when they first arrived at the time, lets you kind of get lost in that whole idea, and then it goes into the story of what was actually going on, or more us as filmmakers uh, reviewing kind of the struggles we had, and then it goes into the story itself. Interesting uh, for, uh, for us here in Milwaukee, obviously, that you picked a, um, a German community because the whole Archdiocese of Milwaukee is uh, literally uh, 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 through and through kind of uh, uh, embedded with this, with the, the, the German spirit. Uh, and the, it was the German spirit that kind of drove and, uh, and built literally our Archdiocese. Oh, yeah. And it's uh, obviously that German spirit that, uh, that, that, that built um, St. Joseph's mm-hmm. Parish. That's that's a huge part. I mean, there were many times we kept getting Chicago, Milwaukee would be right there in the same sentence. The German connection when we spoke, uh, Father Richard Simon was another priest that helped us along, and he really delved into it with uh, the connection between German and Milwaukee and Chicago. The two played a huge role um, in doing that. You know, interesting, um, you know, um, uh, Michael and Bobby, you, you focused in on the pastor, the, the dynamic of the pastor. 
the personality of the the man that that helped shape that that community. Uh, tell us a little bit about something. When you when you do a, a film like this, obviously you in your own mind, although you've never obviously you could never have met him personally, which is a shame. When... Which, yeah, but but you do kind of you do develop a sense, you know, uh, uh, of. What what was your estimation of uh, of this man? What what characteristics would you uh, would you kind of say that this this man possessed that uh, that de- developed this community? Very strong, determined, um, willing kind of person. The the thing that's most fascinating about him is that, as most some half priests know that who are pastors, that's a full time job. This guy went there, and that, although Saint Joseph Parish was his primary job, he you know. He started looking around and go, we can start buying some land and started looking into other areas of land to buy and lease out Um, because priests in Europe at the time, they were trained not really to just be pastors. They were trained to almost be a godfather of the area. He, throughout those 50 years, he was voted mayor on two different occasions. Um, He was responsible for starting the uh, the infamous Nutra High School. He know, okay, we have a school, we need a secondary school, now we need, let's get a high school in here. Um, One of the great high school, public high schools now in the entire nation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so his sort of vision is just so grand. And I'm like, okay, how do you not respect that? Um, Because you hear these stories about these early priests and and they're, you know, they in a weird way, not really weird way. They they were visionaries. They saw this great, you know, um, idea of what to build. And Father Nestrader certainly fits that bill as so many do. Archbishop and I will be back in a couple of minutes to talk more about the Cathedral of the North Shore with uh, co-producers Michael Joles and Bobby Watson. In particular, Archbishop Listecki's involvement in the film. You're listening to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Listecki on Relevant Radio. We'll be right back. So uh, as Michael uh, and his film crew began developing film for the various aspects of our church, one thing led to another, and as I think you'll see in the movie tonight, um, it's quite detailed historically. There's really quite a bit of information about the history of our church. And um, being 168 years old and second oldest parish in the Archdiocese of Chicago, um, one thing led to another, so uh, we began developing this documentary. And that's how it unfolds before you. Welcome back to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Lestecki. We're joined this morning by Michael Joles and Bobby Watson. They're co-producers of the film Cathedral of the North Shore about St. Joseph's Parish in suburban Chicago. You're in this film, Archbishop. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess um, I am. Uh, Michael had contacted me and invited me to to comment upon some questions that he had uh, formulated. Then actually I'd, I'd heard about it through um, a friend, Mr. Tim Johnson, who was a, a friend of mine from uh, St. Joe's in, in Wilmette. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I guess he contacted Michael, and Michael, you know, contacted uh, the office here. And, and so we, we, we set it up. Yeah. The secret meeting. We were not allowed to tell that we had Archbishop of Secular even talking to him. Tim Johnson made that very clear. You have to keep that private. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you know. So, and uh, it wasn't until after we could do the interview that we could actually say, but he made it very clear, like, we have to keep this low key. I was like, sure, no problem. But I, and again, I, my eternal gratitude for him for being able to do that because, you know, we, we had Bishop Francis Kane narrate it and someone, what would now we better yeah. let the audience know that Bishop Francis, Francis Kane, Kane was a former pastor at uh, okay. St. Yes. Joseph's yeah. uh, 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 parish. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it was interesting, you know, uh, for those who might have uh, uh, episcopal aspirations, I was um, I was there um, um, just uh, predated uh, Bishop Kane's um, ordination as a bishop by about uh, three or four three years or so, and um, I was named a, a, a bishop shortly after I, I left um, uh, Saint yeah. Joe's. Now Bishop Kane was there, so all of a sudden, you know, those ecclesiastical, uh, uh, <laughs> ambitious individuals were looking. Hey, maybe this might be the pathway to the episcopacy. The right? <laughs> Who else is in this movie? Who else plays starring roles in the story? Um, Father John Schmid has a part in the film. Father Rob Schultz, uh, Father Robert Tonelli, and then. Uh, most definitely, who had a huge part in 
uh, directing where we needed to go with this was Monsignor John Pollard, um, who is actually one of my mentors and a huge, very important person in um, making this movie happen. Father John Pollard was, was also, also a for, former pastor. At he was um, uh, he was appointed um, pastor at St. Joe's after serving. Um, as a d- director for catechetical education throughout the, the United States for the USCCB. So Monsignor Pollard then uh, returned to the Arch- uh, Archdiocese after serving at the, uh, the conference and was appointed to St. Saint- Saint Joe's. Um, just um, you know, just a few years ago, um, um, Monsignor Pollard then was transferred to mm-hmm. Queen of All, All Saints, Saints Basilica um, in, uh, um, in uh, Saugnash, which is um, uh, on the north side, uh, tip of the uh, uh, north side of uh, uh, Chicago, and uh, serves there as, uh, as pastor. Very, very bright, well, extremely well organized, and a, a wonderful teacher. What do you hope that people who see this film will come away from it with? Uh, well, it is, in my opinion, as, as a filmmaker, and I'm in my middle 20s, I, w- I wanted, especially for the information about the film to come out, but I wanted people to understand that to make a film is not as difficult as it sounds. You know, with the digital age of cameras, there's no more. You don't have to spend millions of dollars uh, to have a great piece of art come out. And so we hope that that people see this and they they try to do the same thing for their parish. Uh, you know, we didn't have a huge budget. We had what we were given in donations, and and it wasn't much, but it was enough to get us out there and motivate us and put breakfast in our bellies and we spent 12 hour days filming and and you know god bless everyone who put up with our patience oh hold on we just need a fixed ca- you know camera difficulties lighting and, and stay, out there, stay out there in the cold for just a little bit longer <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so especially uh we hope that this becomes a trend and we don't need to you know be responsible for it but anybody else out there like us who's interested in film a great place to start might be your own parish because there's a lot of history and yeah, just, you know, have some conversations with people. You'll find that it just gets deeper and deeper. Yeah. Incredible. When you think of some of the major developments in the history of Wilmette, you have to think that the establishment of Nutrier High School, the establishment of St. Joseph's Parish, the organization of the village government are milestones, and he's responsible for all of them. How, how did you come up with the uh, idea for the title, the Cathedral of the, the North? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, the original title for the film uh, was Historic St. Joe's, and one of the associate producers said, no, that's not, that's not a good title. It doesn't sound prestigious enough. And so before I wanted there to be a committee meeting over what we we're going to call the film, um, I had made... Just the, uh, me being me made some smart mouth comment about, well, let's just call it Cathedral of the North Shore. And everyone turned and was like, that's a great title. Now, what does that have to do with it? Um, there was a parishioner who was at um, St. Joe's who was very, also a very close personal friend of myself and our family. She spent Thanksgiving, Christmas's Mother's Day with, the, with us. Her name was Maria Friedrich. And she called St. Joseph's the Cathedral of the North Shore. Uh, is more of a kind of uh, just because the the church was so cathedral like in its look, and also um, Archbishop Listecki and Bishop Kane all coming from you know this parish, so that's where the title of the movie came from. And I also and when you know they said yes, I was like that's really a great title because I didn't want to make it so blatant what we were talking about. Sure, the story centers around St. Joe's, but. It also has to do with a lot more because then there's a World War II involvement. You also have us talking about German Catholic immigrants. It, it was much broader than just St. Joe's. So I like that title because it kind of masked what the movie was about. As you all know, because of your love for St. Joseph Parish, uh, the claim that is made in the name of this film, the Cathedral of the North Shore, is quite a mouthful. <laughs> But it comes from the lips of a very dear person to all of us at St. Joseph Parish, and that is Maria Friedrich, who often, who always thought of uh, St. Joseph Parish as the Cathedral of the North Shore, to which she she dedicated so much of her life. So I know that uh, 
she is with us here this evening as we participate in the unfolding of this wonderful film that really establishes in the minds of even more than, than us the significance and the prominence of St. Joseph Parish in the history of the Archdiocese of Chicago. Thanks very much. And it's a, it, it, just to, uh, to try to have people picture it in, the, in their minds, and we're in, uh, on radio, is, is you, um, as you are on um, uh, Lake Drive, you know, basically uh, uh, coming up, you see this huge uh, mm -hmm. cathedral, no, cathedral, a huge church on the, basically on the, on the corner, that just an edifice that just rises above, you know, every, uh, everything else. Right. And it, it's, you know, it's, uh, it obviously is just, it's captivating. It's, it's beautiful in its presence. Oh, yeah. And the way it kind of sticks out. Boom, it's there. And that was, at least for us as filmmakers, a really fun chance because we, I thought to myself, okay, they go to church every Sunday, they sit down, they see the exact same thing from the exact same point of view. Okay, take that camera, bring it up to the front, raise it up in the air next to Jesus' face on the cross and turn it around. Let's film it in a way that they haven't seen before. Let's put jibs and cranes and film it and sort of like you are traveling through. Because, you know, I looked at, and of course, the, the great of what Mother Angelica accomplished at EWTN. And I looked at it, I go, okay, that was good. But now how do we take that and do something different with it? And again, because I'm so, uh, you know, we look to the other artists um, in Hollywood, such as, especially Brian De Palma and David Fincher, who are big on taking whatever the standard is and bringing it to a new level. We went with that when we filmed this, uh, taking cameras, putting them in different places. And how do you film? You know, there's more than just one way to film just the sanctuary, taken and put in different angles and whatnot. Do, you, do both of you realize that you are, I, I don't know if you do, but you're part of the new evangelization, exactly Definitely. what the, the, the church is, is talked about in terms of, of grabbing hold of those aspects uh, and those instruments uh, that are at our disposal today to tell the story of the church. Uh, absolutely. That was on our mind. That was the very first thing. And, and, and that definitely helped lead us in the right direction. Uh, in this day and age of technology, uh, you know, young people demand high quality everything. Once upon a time, a story was enough, but they need to see it in in 720 and 8 HD. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was absolutely it. You know, how do we take such a great message and put it up there? Well, you know, put it on a roller coaster, you know, put a camera on a roller coaster and swing it around the church. And, and you know, we tested footage with, with younger people and and it ended up being very positive. So we continued with the movie. Every now and then we'd show clips to people. What do you think? And like, wow, that church is beautiful. Wow. And, you know, uh, people would see stained glass windows for the first time in a whole different direction because we put a light behind the window instead of relying on regular yeah. church so we we were hoping that that we would shed new light on the subject in a way that kids can understand do you do you think that um that young people today say more so than the generation that precede that preceded them have an appreciation for for beauty i, I, I oftentimes you know i uh, i see a, a a a young person today a person in their in their 20s Gravitating towards the the more older traditional churches that seem to capture the uh, the uniqueness of a of an age. Do you find that to to be true in the people that are there that this eye for beauty that they have? You know, um, that was something that I went for a little bit because there were two kind of visual aesthetics. One was that uh, we put the camera and you let it move slowly. You just let it hang on an image. And most editors they want to cut it right away. I'm like, no, 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 just let it hang, let the audience kind of lose themselves into it. So in that sense, yes. But on the other hand, this is a very fast energy. They want stuff moving quicker. Sure. So there were other scenes that I said, take that and um, what we call in the business is fincherize it, make the editing really fast, really edgy and, and engage them like that. So we kind of blended the two in this film. Um, and of course, Bobby, who's also one of the editors on the piece, did a great job with um, editing it in a way where it wasn't too mundane it was also um very rich and in content for people to watch um so it was a blending of the old beauty and i really did want to kind of take the old and the new and put them together in a way that would hit it in a audiences in a, in a new light 
the understanding and um, uh, that both of you have given to you know uh, an old quote story, the old story of a pastor um, who is is tasked with serving his community, uh, shepherding them if you want, and building up the uh, that community. But uh, the newness of it is that it had seen through the lens of uh, of an instruments that that are this modern age, and so you help literally um, understand the uh, the mystery which is behind the the work of the man and the development of the the, the community. And I, I tell you, I thank both of you for sharing your talent, uh, not only with the, the local parish but with the entire church and. I, I also commend you both for, for challenging others to use the instruments to be able to explicate um, uh, the wonderful presence of Christ in, in those communities. So, so Michael, thank you very much. Bobby, thank you thank both you for, for, for sharing your talent. Maybe this time next year we'll be talking about the uh, red carpet and the Oscars for uh, 2014. Well, that would be pretty good. I would, that would be <laughs> yeah, a great day. Yeah. Right, is that documentary, will it be submitted? Uh, yeah. One or two I mean, right yes. problems, it could be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, we just we're, we're very humble about it. Like if we made it that far, that would yeah, that would wonderful. be a blessing. Hey, that would be Good great. You. Thanks again, Michael and Bobby, for joining us. Thank you. Talk about Cathedral of the North Shore, uh, Archbishop. As always, let's close with a prayer, please. Sure, and we'll use our our prayer for the year of the faith. Um, and um, uh, very thankful for all those um, uh, individuals in the arts that um, that use them so well to to help um, have us encounter the presence of uh, of God in our lives. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh God, as you sent your Holy Spirit upon the early church, in the fiery tongues and the mighty wind of Pentecost, so now we ask you to send that same Spirit upon us, that we may go forth to proclaim the gospel of Christ to every creature. We humbly pray that you deepen your Trinitarian life within us. Make us effective and holy witnesses of Jesus' death and resurrection. Help us to live our Catholic faith, with such joy, conviction, and love that others will be drawn to the sacred mystery of your church and the powerful grace of the sacraments. We implore you to make us the ministers of your word in speech and action, in truth and charity, in the mystery of Jesus' cross and the light of his resurrected glory. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Archbishop. And thank you so much for joining us. The Archbishop and I will be back in a couple of weeks with another edition of Living Our Faith. certainly hope you will join us at that time. In the meantime, I'm Jeff Jackson, wishing you a happy weekend. See you at Mass.